Hello, my wonderful viewers. Welcome to my platform. This is Linda's TV show. If it is your first time of coming across this channel and you like what you see after watching, please subscribe, put on your notification bell, set it to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to get notified each time I upload a new video, even those without notification. Here we react to all forms of videos, international and local. Every Saturday by 2 p.m. we have our interaction section. You are free to call in to air your opinion about the happenings in our society. Invite your friends, share my videos with your families and colleagues. Do not keep this information to yourself. Myself, I will be sitting down here to watch this video together with you from the beginning to the end. Then we'll go to the comment section and leave our comment, our opinion about the video we we'll watch constructively as we watch this video, my people. In case if you don't understand for what happened to this video, this one has shown just where they go Ibu land for inside one shrine, go burn the shrine. So as they reach their camp, now all of them can't die. So listening for Ibu, we will hear what our sister talk about this issue. Yeah, my no, no. Nasonda. As I'm in Jerelis, yeah, he had hundred soldiers. Wound the wagon and done. No, he may come for his idealism. Like a house in a hala urunabal, Catano. As in hala urunabal, who think around Yapotano, Emo Yamarebo, Emo Ebrum, nothing, nothing. Honey Lelabur, who think around Yakata, as our borrows on her, as in Bosom, Hap, Hap, Hak, Hap, or the non of Tampota, and the Han in the Sikam from those others. Before now, why I was a Joe Nozu, Ozu carry more than fifteen soldiers. No name, Campa, before now, and my addendum. Honey, let one out, Nihila, who jere, jere, wow, be the uncle, honey, let a moya patron. Here, Kayano, Tana, Baleaway, or your master came, and the came one. Everybody put up one over and over. I wait him be that this girl where they explain, I say, now the camp where these soldiers they buy, now my day, they write exam. As they reach their camp, nobody wake up again. So only God go save our country will be Niger. On a bye bye, share this video so that others go know what they happen for our own country. This council is a Charles Puma and the members of the traditional rulers council for their role as custodians of age long traditions and more importantly those who use their moral authority to ensure no harm befalls their people. Your presence here today gladdens my heart. Great recognition must also be made to the Council of Elders of Wuhanese worldwide, who under the leadership of Chief Dr. Emmanuel C. Uwanyawu, as Chairman, Council of Elders, have remained very engaging on significant number of issues that are of national importance to us as a nation. It is by no means an accident that I find myself back in Ibonyi in your company to bear witness and also commission a number of projects that were designed to upgrade the quality of infrastructure 
and by extension improve the quality of life for the people of this great state. The people of Ibonyi have always demonstrated their affection for active and result-oriented governance. Hence, it was of no surprise that the great migration, in quote, took place as they joined our great party, the All Progressive Congress. The works I have seen since my arrival have provided the state a new and fresh outlook from what it looked like in 2017, providing the landscape with more character and personality. <laughs> the work and commitment of the Umayya administration has promoted an interstate rivalry across the southeast and has inhabitants of one state beginning to hold their own state executives to account for their stewardship. There is no better form of checks and balances than that which is people-centric and people-driven all geared towards improvement of service delivery. This accountability mechanism is a critical element in our democracy. I congratulate His Excellency for his vision, commitment, and steadfastness in ensuring he delivers infrastructures to the benefit of the people. My own commitment to improving our infrastructure stock is without a doubt intentional and deliberate as there can be no economic growth without the ability of such an entrepreneurial population as we have to traverse the length and breadth of this country seeking opportunities. This has been achieved in spite of the very difficult times the world has faced from an economic standpoint and due to the complete global slowdown because of COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to highlight a few of our achievements in the Southeast region. I am proud of the reconstruction of the runway of the Akainu Evian International Airport, Enugu, and ongoing work and the ongoing work upgrade of the international terminal building. The 200 billion Naira Second Niger Bridge comprising the main bridge through the river Niger and the 10 kilometers six lane expressway in Onisha and Asaba will be due for completion this year. Our $5.5 million diagnostic center in Umahia, which is already operational. The salt of the nation was also beneficiary of a renewed drive in agriculture, particularly the revitalization of the Merband fertilizer blending plant in Abakaliki, which now supplies NPK fertilizer to farmers in the state and all over the southeast. This is in addition to my recent approval to the Solid Mineral Development Fund to intensify its activities in advancing our backward integration efforts in limestone and phosphate mining, both of which are critical elements in the fertilizer value chain, which has come under significant pressure due to the Russia-Ukraine war. On our successful achievement of this objective, 
will not only save the country's significant foreign exchange, but will also improve our ability to grow our reserves in a positive way. The ongoing and completed 60 different works projects located across the sub-region and all funded from the 600 billion Naira Sukuk bond issuance that has been equally spent across the geopolitical zones in the country. The summary I just provided is certainly not exhaustive and that uh, they are be seen by those who are fond of peddling a narrative that projects a lack of care or consideration for people of the South East by this administration. While I'm proud of these accomplishments and many others, we continue to work towards achieving the infrastructure space. I must register my deep and grave concern with regards to the deteriorating state of security affairs in this region. In the last 48 hours, I have been informed of the latest in the round of brutal actions carried out by gang-wielding terrorists who prey on innocent and hard-working citizens. Unfortunately, these barbaric acts were festered often those who have committed their lives to protecting their fellow citizens. With the souls of these soldiers and many others who have been lost to these evildoers rest in peace. Terrorists who unfortunately have also brainwashed a certain segment of the population that continue to contribute their hard-earned funds towards their hate-filled messages, but now have them terrorized through their brutal killings, truncation of commercial activities, restriction of freedom of movement, and the ability to exercise basic human rights must be fleshed out from amongst us and that can only be done with the support of the people. I have listened carefully to the various appeals from the elders to the traditional leaders regarding a wide range of options and as I have said previously this matter remains in the full view of the courts where it will be properly educated. My worry is for our hardworking and innocent civilians for whom life is already tough and would like to just go out and earn a decent, honest living. There are many that fit this profile and the government owes them that obligation to protect their lives and property. I will once again repeat, no one has the right to carry an AK-47 rifle and anyone seen in any part of the country doing so and is not a law enforcement officer is a threat to our peaceful coexistence and should be treated as such as we find ourselves in the process of selecting another round of leadership for our country. I have repeatedly insisted that among the many legalities I am committed to ensuring is that of a free and fair elections. Every citizen must feel that their role counts and they are able to practice their constitutional right without fear or any form of intimidation. In doing
In doing so, may the voice of the people be supreme. I thank you for the very warm hospitality. God bless you and God bless my wonderful viewers for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end like i said before if you like what you see here if you like what i do in this platform as you have finished watching this video please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notification in that way you'll be able to know when i upload a new video share my videos leave your comments in the comment section constructively until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.